Welcome to Storybook Michelle. Today's story is Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Once upon a time, in a faraway kingdom, there lived seven dwarfs who had a wonderful story to tell. People came from near and far to hear how they had once rescued a beautiful princess. The story began on a snowy winter's evening many years earlier, as the queen of Fairland sat by a window, sewing with finely colored threads. As she sewed, the gentle queen pricked her finger, and a drop of her blood fell on the snow-covered window sill. The queen, who had long been hoping for a child, made a wish. I wish I had a child with hair as black as night, lips as red as blood, and skin as white as snow, she said. Later that year, a lovely daughter was born to the queen, and her wish was fulfilled. The child had night black hair, red lips, and fair skin. The happy queen named her child Snow White. But sadly, the queen died soon after her daughter was born. After a time, Snow White's father, the king, married again. The new queen was also very beautiful, but she was proud and cold-hearted, unlike the mother of Snow White. Every day, she stood before her magic mirror and asked it the same question. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest one of all? And each day, the mirror would answer. You, O oh queen, are the fairest by far. The years went by and Snow White grew up, becoming more beautiful with every day that passed. Her stepmother began to hate Snow White, not only because she was beautiful, but because she was kind and good and loved by all. For years, she hid her hatred from Snow White and from her husband, the king. But one day, the queen stood before her mirror and heard a new answer to her question. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest one of all? This time, the mirror replied, You have beauty, O queen, but now Snow White is fairer than you. The jealous queen was enraged and began to plot against her stepdaughter. Calling one of her huntsmen, she ordered him, Take Snow White deep into the forest and kill her, and bring back proof that you have done so. The huntsman dared not disobey the queen. Much against his will, he told Snow White that he must go with her next time she visited the forest. Snow White often walked in the forest, where she could escape from the unkindness of her stepmother and the constant noise and activities of the castle. She enjoyed her quiet hours alone, but she was too kind-hearted to refuse the huntsman's request. Next time she walked in the forest, she allowed him to go with her, as her stepmother had ordered. In a clearing far from the castle, the huntsman suddenly drew his dagger. But Snow White was so innocent and beautiful that he could not carry out the queen's order. Confessing what had happened, the huntsman cried, Run away, 
I will tell the queen that you are dead. Horrified Snow White fled deep into the forest. The huntsman killed a young deer and placed its heart in a wooden box. He returned to the castle and presented it to the queen, saying, Here is the heart of Snow White, as you commanded. Snow White had run until she could go no farther. Below her, she saw a small thatched cottage nestled in a shady hollow. Perhaps I can take shelter there, she thought, and get something to eat before I go on. From a distance, the small animals of the forest watched and wondered. Snow White walked down the hill and knocked timidly at the door of the cottage. When there was no answer, she let herself in. Back at the castle, the queen asked her magic mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? But the mirror replied, Queen, thou art of beauty rare, but Snow White is a thousand times more fair. Then the mirror showed an image of Snow White entering a little cottage. Snow White! shrieked the enraged queen. She lives! The huntsman didn't kill her after all. I shall have to do the job myself. When Snow White entered the cottage, she was surprised to find that everything inside was very small. The cups, the knives, and forks, even the beds. The hungry girl poured herself a cup of milk and ate a slice of bread. This house is so cozy, thought Snow White. But it's such a mess. Whoever lives here is very untidy. I can take care of this, said Snow White to herself. Perhaps if I make myself useful, I'll be allowed to stay. Snow White found a broom and set to work. When she had finished cleaning, the girl lay down on one of the beds and fell fast asleep. Late that afternoon, the seven dwarves shouldered their tools and left the mine. In an orderly line, according to the numbers on their heads, they filed through the forest until they reached their cottage. But dwarf number one stopped in surprise when he saw that the cottage door was wide open. Alarmed, the dwarves peeked inside their cottage. But instead of an intruder, they saw a beautiful young girl sound asleep on one of their beds, just as if she belonged there. Who can this be? The dwarves asked one another. But the only way to find out was to disturb their unexpected visitor. Snow White awoke with a start. Then she quickly told the little man about her stepmother's wicked plot and how she had ended up in their cottage. The dwarves, who were instantly won over by Snow White's gentleness and beauty, were shocked at the queen's ruthlessness. Mm -hmm. You may stay with us as long as you like. The dwarves promised Snow White. Your wicked stepmother will never find you here. Snow White was very happy to meet with such kindness after the cruel treatment she had received from her stepmother. I will cook and clean and mend for you, she promised the dwarves. Thank you for letting me stay. Then she set the table for dinner, and they celebrated their new friendship with a party. The next morning, 
Snow White made a delicious breakfast of pancakes, fresh eggs, ham, and buttered toast. The dwarfs set off their mine, well fed and in high spirits. Now be careful of strangers. They called back to Snow White. Don't speak to anyone you don't know. I won't. She answered, waving goodbye. Then, humming to herself, she went into the cottage to begin her chores. At the castle, the queen was busy with her new plan. Disguising herself as an old peasant woman in a mask and ragged clothes, the queen brewed a deadly poison. Into it, she dipped a basketful of apples. The queen made her way to the dwarf's cottage. There, late in the day, she found Snow White alone. Good day, my child. She said in a feeble, trembling voice. Would you like a ripe apple? The apple looked so good that Snow White forgot the dwarf's warning against strangers. Her kindness made her unwilling to refuse the poor old woman's gift. Oh, thank you, she replied. And she took a bite of the poison fruit. Immediately, Snow White fell to the ground, as if she were dead. The wicked queen left with pleasure. Just as the queen turned back toward the castle, the seven dwarfs came home and saw Snow White lying beside the spilled basket of apples. The angry dwarfs raced after her with their picks, but the queen was too fast for them, and she escaped into the forest. The jealous queen rushed into her castle without taking the time to remove her disguise. She hurried to her magic mirror and asked it who was fairest. But the mirror replied, "O、oh, queen." Snow White is dead. It's true. Now your face is as ugly as your heart is too. The queen shrieked in fury and tore off her mask. She had a moment to glimpse her face, which had turned ugly and old, before the mirror split and shattered on the floor. Meanwhile. The dwarfs had given up the chase and returned to their princess, who lay where she had fallen. The little man gathered around her lifeless body, and wept. It was hard to believe that her goodness and beauty had been destroyed in a moment by her jealous stepmother. Using their great skill as metal workers. The dwarfs fashioned a gleaming casket of gold and crystal. Sadly, they placed Snow White in the casket and set it atop a high hill. For many days and nights, they kept the vigil beside it. One day, the handsome prince of a nearby kingdom noticed the beautiful crystal and gold casket. Shining in the sun, he rode closer and saw that it contained a beautiful young woman. The dwarfs told him the sad story, and the prince too began to weep. For such sweet innocence to have suffered such a cruel fate, he whispered, "I feel that I love her." Let me kiss her just once before I go. Solemnly, the dwarfs opened the casket, and the prince gathered Snow White in his arms. As soon as he placed a gentle kiss on her lips, Snow White opened her eyes. 
Where am I? She asked. Love had broken the queen's evil spell. Overjoyed, the prince and the dwarfs told Snow White what had happened. As they spoke, Snow White watched the prince's kind face and listened to his gentle voice. The dwarfs could see the love between them grow like magic. Will you come with me to my father's castle? Asked the prince. And be my bride. Snow White joyfully agreed. The dwarfs were delighted that Snow White had awakened to a new life. They danced at the wedding of their princess and her prince, and the happy couple never forgot the seven dwarfs who had helped the princess and brought them together. This is the end of the story. Good night.